We continue our Detroit 2020 series on the 1967 riots, looking back to look forward. And this time, we wanted to explore white flight and what it meant to the makeup of the city. Carolyn Clifford is here now to show us what she found and why the reasons people left are not so black and white. Carolyn. So right about that. Amazing to think we're just two weeks away from the anniversary of the riots too. And where you lived in the city made a big difference about whether the riots had an effect on your life. More importantly, whether or not you felt an urgent need to leave and never look back. If you travel anywhere in the country today and mention Detroit, people instantly think of a predominantly black urban city. Hard to believe in 1940, 90% of the city's population was white. Larry Pyler was born in Detroit in 1936. I don't ever remember black people in any of the neighborhoods I lived in. From the 1940s to the 1970s, black people were excluded from white areas by way of violence or economic discrimination called redlining. Those who lived through it say that treatment helped spark the 1967 riots and a mass white exodus from the city. When you think about Caucasian families leaving the city of Detroit, really in droves, mm -hmm. um, what do you attribute that to? Some of it, it was, it was to get away from the tension and get away from the racial conflict. Larry relocated his family to Shelby Township. We left in 72, and not because it wasn't safe. I left because I really didn't like the school system. Gail Rodwin and her husband did just the opposite. They moved from Royal Oak here to a grand home in the beautiful Sherwood Forest on the city's northwest side. Did people ever say to you, why in the world would you move to Detroit, especially now? Um, people have been saying that to us for almost 50 years. <laughs> Before the riots, this now 100-year-old immaculate neighborhood was nearly all white. During that time, it was a neighborhood that black people did not live in. After the riots, white flight was frantic. 67,000 people fled in the summer following the uprising, 80,000 more the following year. The racial makeup of Sherwood Forest would flip from majority white to 75% black over the next decade. It was unheard of almost for a long period of time to see a white family move into the neighborhood, but now it's very common. Gail's daughter, Laura, who lived in other states, returned to Michigan to buy a home here in her childhood neighborhood of Sherwood Forest. We weren't really aware, I don't think, as kids of all the strife and trauma that was going on in the city at the time. I just remember it being really an idyllic childhood. As you can see from these family photos, blacks and whites lived here in harmony. And when all had given up on Detroit, this neighborhood bonded. Gail wrote this book celebrating 100 years of Sherwood Forest. I think part of it is that people are interested in reading about Detroit right now. I think it's also that people are interested in the idea of keeping their neighborhood strong and viable. And that is one strong and viable neighborhood, you know, that Sherwood Forest. Now, unlike the Rodwins, Larry Pyler may never return to live in the city, but he's happy to see the gradual comeback, especially in downtown and midtown. It's estimated nearly 75,000 whites now live in the city, and that number is growing. Meantime, if you'd like to purchase this book about Sherwood Forest, it is available at Wayne State, Amazon, and Barnes and & Noble. But I think the most amazing thing when you think about Detroit, a lot of diversity is coming back to Detroit. Whites, blacks, other national, nationalities are coming back, buying homes, and loving it. We saw so many people who, who moved out of the city, and they have just not gone back, and, and they're missing something. Mm. They need to go back. They're afraid to go back, and sometimes I'm never going back. They need to go back and check it out. But that's starting to change. It's starting to change. Gradually. This is so important because it's a special neighborhood with its own story inside that uprising. Absolutely, absolutely. A, be right. a beautiful neighborhood. Good. They're showing the power really across the country. Good story. Thank yeah. you, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. All right, Carolyn. You know